Now we'll see how the sporophyte of Marchensia develops on the archegoniophore. Actually, the archegonia develops on the dorsal surface of the thalli, that is on the archegoniophore. But after fertilization, because of the differential growth in the receptacle cells, the lobes of the archegoniophore get inverted and the archegonia also occupy a different position on the ventral surface. The smaller ones are towards the center and the larger are the mature archegonia towards the periphery. And the set of archegonia covered by a sterile jacket, a sterile layer or membranous layer which is called as a perichetium. The fertilized egg is called as the zygote. The zygote is the starting stage for the sporophytic generation. It is deployed in its nature. Now this single celled zygote divides a number of times to develop the sporophyte which has a bulbous foot, a seta and a capsule. The foot is multicellular, massive, gets embedded in the tissue of the archegoniophore. The seta initially is stout with small cells, later on it elongates. The capsule has an outer layer called as an amphithecium, inner spore mother cells, elater mother cells which develop into elaters. This complete structure develops from a single zygotic cell. Now we'll see how the zygotic cell divides to form this complex structure. This cell I'm going to draw it here. This is the zygotic cell which is the starting stage for the sporophytic generation. The first division in the zygotic cell is a transverse division which results in the formation of an upper cell and a lower cell. The upper cell is called as the epibasal cell and the lower cell is called as the hypobasal cell. This becomes the upper cell because the archegonia is in the inverted position. This is the upper part of the archegonia, that is the lower part of the archegonia. Another division occurs at right angles to the first division, that is this is a transverse division. The second division is vertical division. This results in the formation of four cells. Two cells are of the hypobasal cells and the two are the epibasal cells. This four cell stage is called as a quadrant stage. Simultaneously, because of the stimulus created by fertilization, from the venter wall, from the venter wall, a sterile layer of cells start developing around the archegonium or the venter of the archegonium covering the young sporophyte. This sterile layer is 2 to 3 layered in its nature and is called as the calyptra. So from the venter wall, 2 or 3 layers of cells develop. This is called as the calyptra. Calyptra is a protective covering around the sporophyte. Another layer starts developing from the base of the archegonia and that layer is developed outside the calyptra and this forms a single layer jacket which is called as the perigynium. This is also called as the pseudoperianth. So the developing sporophyte is covered by calyptra which is two to three layered perigynium, a single layered and a set of archegonia covered by perichetium. So the young sporophyte is well protected during its development. At this quadrant stage, the cells again divide by a number of divisions and they start developing into foot, the central two cells start developing into seta and the uppermost develops into by a number of divisions they develop into the capsule. Hypobasal cell divides to form the foot and a part of the seta. Epibasal cell divides to form a capsule and the remaining part of the seta. That is the seta develops partially from the hypobasal cell and partially from the epibasal cell.
The cells which are supposed to become the food divide a number of times and form a bulbous food. This bulbous food gets embedded into the tissue of the archegoniophore. The zeta develops from the central cells. The zeta is small, stout with smaller cells. The cells which are destined to become capsule will divide to form a number of cells. Usually when they are at the 8 cell stage, all the 8 cells will divide periclinally to form an outer layer of cells and the inner mass of cells. This is the cells which are supposed to become the capsule. The outer layer of cells is called as the amphithecium. And the inner mass of cells is called as the endothecium. The amphithecium divides. The amphithecial cells divide by anticlinal walls to increase the number of cells which helps in increasing the size of the capsule. The endothecial cells also divide and now they get differentiated into a tissue called as archisporium. The cells of Archisporium divide and form cuboidal cells which are arranged in a vertical line. These cuboidal cells are called as the sporogenous tissue. The sporogenous tissue further divides to form cells called as the spore mother cells. 50% of the sporogenous tissue develops into spore mother cells. The spore mother cells undergo reduction division and they form spore tetrads. The remaining 50% of sporogenous tissue are called as elator mother cells which do not undergo meiosis but they simply elongate and form elators. So here 50% of them are spore mother cells which form spore tetrads after reduction division and the remaining elongate to form elators. When the capsule is mature or when the sporophyte matures, it has spore mother cells, spore tetrads, elators and is now ready for descents. At maturity, there are certain changes seen in the zeta of the capsule or in the zeta of the sporophyte. The cells of zeta elongate and push the capsule out of the perichetium. The perichetium ruptures and the capsule is now exposed to the external environment. The capsule dehisces by longitudinal grooves and the spores fall on the substratum. 
The elaters help in the dispersal of spores. When the spores come in contact with the substratum, they germinate to develop in a new thalli of Markensia.